All right, so this is a part two to my uh, introduction to stoichiometry video. And uh, in this video, we're gonna discuss the concept of a limiting reagent and a percent yield. So to start this lesson, I'm gonna start you off with sort of a simple but very relevant um, analogy, okay? So suppose you're having some guests over and you wanna try to make as many PB and J sandwiches as possible. You know, maybe you're a broke college student like me and PB and J's is just about all you can afford. But anyway, as many PB and J's as possible. So suppose you have enough peanut butter for, you know, 24 PB and J's, enough jelly for 18 PB and J's, and enough bread for 12 PB and J's. Well, the question that I present to you is how many PB and J's could you make all together? If you answered 12, you're correct. So the number of PB and J's that I can make, assuming that I want to make as many as possible, is going to be limited to whichever one of these three that I have the least of. And that in this case, it just happens to be bread. Chemical reactions work in a very, very similar fashion. The limiting reagent in a chemical reaction is the reactant that runs out first. So that doesn't mean that it's the reactant that you have less of. It just means that it's the reactant that runs out first if you want to complete the reaction. The, limit, the limiting reagent determines what we call a theoretical yield. And a theoretical yield is simply the mass, volume, or amount of a product formed when the reaction goes to completion. So that is what a theor theoretical yield is. And we're going to get a little more into this in the next in the problem that I'm going to do. So here's the problem. Actually, before I get to the problem, there's also another term called percent yield. And all the percent yield is is just an actual yield over your theoretical yield times 100%. So this has significance if you're working in a laboratory and you run a chemical reaction and you get, you know, let's say I get, you know, 10 grams of a certain product well, generally, you're going to lose some of that some of that product to you know random error, systematic error, you know, depending on which method you're using. So, ideally, you want to get the theoretical yield, but you never truly get it. You always get something less than the theoretical yield when you carry out a reaction, and that is what the actual yield is. So you take your actual yield, divide it by your theoretical yield, and then express it as a percentage by multiplying it by 100%. That's, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. So let's work on a, on a problem that kind of goes over the limiting reagent, theoretical yield, and percent yield. So suppose I have this reaction. This is the combustion of propane. I used it in my last video, so I'll do it again. And it says that you have 30 grams of O2 oxygen that reacts with 11 grams of propane, C3H8. The questions are, what is the limiting reagent, uh, what is the theoretical yield of H2O in grams, and if you carry out an experiment that gives 10 grams of H2O, what is the percent yield? So this is, this is a common type of problem that you'll probably see um, on an exam if, uh, if you're taking general chemistry. All right. So let's start with the first question. It asks you what the limiting reagent is. Okay, so what you need to do when you're first trying to solve these problems is you need to just write out, simply write out how much of each reactant that you have. Okay, so it says that I have 32 grams of O2 and it also says that I have 11 grams of propane, C3H8. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert both of these values into moles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my conversion factors. We're going to put grams on the bottom. And we're going to put moles on top. Okay, so in this situation, in this case right down here, we're talking about grams of propane, so it's grams of propane, C3H8. 
And up here we're talking about oxygen, so O2. And then from the periodic table, you can look up, you know, how many of each atom you have, multiply it by the the weight of the molecular weight of that particular element and then add those together. I've already done that. So O2 is 32 grams per mole. And propane is 44 grams per mole. So now that these are in these are in moles. So that gives me one gram or excuse me, one mole of O2. And then I have 11 over 44, so that's 0.25 moles of propane. Okay, so now we have both of these values in moles. Now, what you might be asking yourself is, you know, isn't isn't aren't we done here finding a lim limiting reagent? I mean, you know, we only have 0.25 moles of propane, and then we have a full mole of oxygen. So, you know, isn't propane the limiting reagent? The answer is not necessarily. What we need to do is we need to refer to the balanced chemical equation for this reaction. And we need to find out how much moles we need of one reactant in terms of the other reactant. Okay, so I'm gonna start with propane. So suppose I'm, I'm propane is my suspect. I, I think he's the limiting reagent, but I'm not quite sure yet. So we have 0 0.25 moles of propane. Now I'm gonna express this value in terms of moles of oxygen. That's the number I wanna find out. So I have moles of propane on the bottom. And then I have moles of oxygen on top. And according to this chemical equation, it says that one mole of propane reacts with five moles of oxygen. So I'm gonna set up this conversion factor as such. One mole of propane and five moles of oxygen. And what do you get? You get five times 0.25, which is 1.25 moles of oxygen. So that means if we carry out this reaction with 0.25 moles of propane, we're going to need 1.25 moles of oxygen so that all of the propane gets used up. But if you look, we only have one mole of oxygen. So then which one of these is the limiting reagent? It's oxygen, not propane. Just because we have less of it doesn't necessarily mean it's a limiting reagent. You have to consider the balanced chemical equation and the molar ratios. So based on that, we can infer that oxygen is in fact the limiting reagent, not propane. If you carried this, the, this calculation out in a similar way, you could have started with propane, and then you would, would have ended up with a value less excuse me, you could have started out with oxygen and then you would have ended up with a value less than what you have of propane. See how that works? So oxygen is definitely the limiting reagent. So now what we have to do is calculate the theoretical yield of water in grams, right? So we have to remember here that the theoretical yield is, al is always gonna be based on the limiting reagent. Okay, and in that case, this is oxygen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to express the mass of water in grams that is formed when five moles of oxygen reacts with excess propane. So we're going to start <clears throat> with our moles of oxygen. We have one mole of oxygen. Now we're going to look at the molar ratio between oxygen and water. And it says we need five moles of oxygen to react and form four moles of water. But we're not quite done yet. 
it asks for the theoretical yield of water in grams, right? So now we got to use the molar mass of water given from the periodic table to determine its equivalent for or excuse me, its equivalent mass in grams. So now we're going to put moles of water on the bottom, and we're going to put grams of water on top. And there are 18 grams of water per mole of water. Okay. And the calculator, if you put this into a calculator, you'll get 14.4 grams of water. So that is how we determine the theoretical yield of H2O when one mole of O2 reacts in excess propane. Okay. <clears throat> now we have one last quick step, which is the percent yield of H2O if 10 grams of it is formed in the laboratory. So the equation is percent yield equals actual yield over theoretical yield times 100 percent. Our actual yield given by the problem says 10 grams Our theoretical yield that we just solved for is 14.4 grams of water. And don't forget to multiply it by 100%. And that'll give you the percent yield of water. So I haven't even calculated this yet. So that would be 69.4% is your percent yield. You can check my math on that. I don't know if it's correct, but the concept is more important than the actual value. Notice that you have grams of H2O on the top and you have grams of H2O on the bottom. So <clears throat> those two units are going to cancel out and you'll get nothing but just percent, which is what you want. So I hope this video was helpful and good luck.